Hello everyone. Today we are going to design a simply supported one way slab. Let us read the question and write the given data. Design a simply supported RCC slab for a roof of a hall 4 meter by 10 meter inside dimensions. The short side should be taken as LX that is 4 meter and the long side should be taken as LY that is 10 meter with the 230 millimeter walls all around. The wall thickness is given as 230 millimeter. Assume a live load of 4 kN per meter square and surface finish of 1 kN per meter square. Use grade 25 concrete and FE 415 steel. FCK is 25 and FI is 415. First, we have to check whether it is a one-way or a two-way slab. For LOI upon LX, we will get 2.5. It is greater than 2. In this case, it is a one-way slab. In some cases, the same question will be asked only with the short side. For both of these questions, the solution will be same. The first step is to find the depth of the slab. In the IS 456 code book, we have to take the page number 37. Here we can find the span to depth ratios. For simply supported, it is given as 20. Actually, these values are for the beams. But according to this code book, we can use them for the slabs also. For the slabs, large L upon D can be assumed. So instead of 20, I have assumed 25. When we use the span, we have to be very careful. We have to use the short span. The short span is given as 4 meter. We can convert that into millimeter. In this way, for the effective depth D, we will get 160 millimeter. Now, we are going to design the clear cover. In this code book, we have to take the page number 47. The exposure is not given in the question. We can assume that it is mild. For mild, the cover is 20. For main reinforcement, up to 12 mm diameter bar. The nominal cover may be reduced by 5 mm. In this design, I am going to use the main reinforcement bar as a 10 mm diameter. So, we can reduce the clear cover by 5 mm. In this case, for the clear cover, we will get 15 mm. It is the main reinforcement. The diameter is 10 mm. From the center of this rebar up to the top piece, the effective depth D, which is 160. This distance is half diameter of the rebar 5. This is the clear cover, that is 15. So, to find the overall depth capital D, we have to add 160, 5 and 15. So, we will get 180 millimeter. So, the overall depth D is 180 millimeter and the effective depth D is 160 millimeter. Now, we are going to find the effective span. In this code book, we have to open the page number 34. The effective span of a member that is not built integrally with its supports shall be taken as the clear span plus the effective depth of the slab or center to center of the supports. Just before, we have found the effective depth as 160 millimeter. We can convert that into meter 160 by 1000, it will be 0.16. When we add these two, we will get 4.16 meter. In the question, wall thickness is given as 230 millimeter. 230 upon 1000, we will get in meter, that is 0.23. Let us assume that it is the slab and it is the wall. The clear span is 4. The wall thickness is 0.23. The center to center of the support is 0.23 by 2 plus 4 plus 0.23 by 2. 0.23 by 2 plus 0.23 by 2, it will be 0.23. That is why 
we are adding 0.23 with the 4. When we do that, we will get a 4.23 meter. Out of these two, we have to take whichever is less. 4.16 is less than these. So we have to keep the effective span as 4.16 meter. Now we are going to find the factored load. To find the dead load, we have to multiply the overall depth D with the unit weight of the concrete 25 kN per meter cube. We need to convert 180 into meter 180 by 1000. It will be 0.18. When we multiply these two, we will get 4.5. In the question, the live load and floor finish are given. We have to add these three. After adding, we will get 9.5. To find the factored load, we have to multiply this load with 1.5. In this way, we will get 14.25 kN per meter square. To find the factored load for 1 meter length, with this we have to multiply 1 meter. In this way we will get 14.25 kN per meter. Now let us find the moment M. Let us take a simply supported beam. Suppose the load is W per meter and the span is L. The bending moment diagram will be the parabolic shape. The formula to find the moment is WL square upon 8. The maximum shear force will be in the supports. That will be the reaction which is WL upon 2. The effective length we know 4.16. We can apply that. W just before we have calculated. For the moment M, we will get 30.83 kN meter. And for the shear force V, we will get 29.64 kN. Now we are going to apply the check for the maximum depth. Let us see how to derive this formula. In this code book, we have to take page number 96. In this formula, we have to apply xu max upon d. That value we can get from the page number 70. For FI 415, it is 0.48. Instead of this, we have to apply 0.48. In this way, we can derive this formula. We have calculated the moment in kilonewton meter. We have to convert that into newton millimeter. For that, we have to multiply that with 10 power 6. FCK is 25. B is 1000. For the breadth B, we have to always apply 1 meter. That is 1000 millimeter. For the required depth, we will get 94.53. But our effective depth is more than that. In this case, this effective depth is enough. So the section will be under reinforced. Now we are going to provide the reinforcement in the slab. We have to copy this formula from the page number 96. In this formula, we can apply all of the values. We will get this equation. Then using a calculator, we can solve this quadratic equation. In this way for AST, we will get 567 millimeter square. If you are allowed to use SP16, from the table number 3, we can find the percentage of steel. And using that, we can find the area very easily. We need to find MU upon BD square. For that, we will get 1.2. Our FI is 415. At 1.2 and 415, the percentage is 0.353. Then, using this formula, we can find area. If you can't memorize this formula, in this code book, we have to open page number 73. Here, we can see the formula. Pt is equal to 100 AST upon BD. So AST will be Pt BD upon 100. In this way, we will get this formula. And using that formula for AST, we will get 565. In the previous method for AST, we have got 567 millimeter square. 
you can see that both of the values are approximately equal anyway i wanted to proceed with 567 mm square now we are going to check whether the area is enough in this code book we have to take page number 48 the mild steel reinforcement in either direction in slabs shall not be less than 0.15% of the total cross sectional area however this value can be reduced to 0.12% when high strength deformed bars are used we are using fe 415 high strength deformed bars in this case we have to take 0.12% the cross sectional area is bd we have to always keep the breadth as 1000 the overall depth is 180 when we calculate this we will get a 216 mm square but our AST is more than that so we can proceed with this AST using this formula we can find the spacing small AST is the cross-sectional area of the reinforcement the formula is pi d square upon 4 we have already decided that we would keep 10 mm diameter for the main reinforcement bars so here d will be 10 in this way we will get 138 mm let us round that as 130 mm so let us provide 10 mm diameter bars at the spacing of 130 mm and alternate bars are bent up in the end in the diagram i will show that now we have to find the provided ast we know the formula for the spacing spacing is equal to 1000 ast upon capital ast so ast will be 1000 by spacing into small ast using that formula we can find the provided area as 604 millimeter square now let us apply the check for cracking three things we have to check the steel reinforcement shall not be less than 0.12% of the total cross sectional area we have already checked that here we are safe let us see the second condition the diameter of the reinforcing bar shall not exceed one eight of the total thickness of the slab the total thickness is the overall depth d 180 upon 8 we will get 22.5 our diameter is less than that so here also we are safe let us see the third condition in this code book we have to open the page number 46 the horizontal distance between parallel main reinforcement bars shall not be more than three times the effective depth of the solid slab three into the effective depth d we will get a 480 when we compare these two 300 millimeter is small the spacing should not be more than 300 millimeter our spacing is 130 it is less than 300 in all three our design is safe now we are going to design the distribution reinforcement for the distribution reinforcement we can provide the minimum area that is the 0.12 percent of the cross-sectional area we have already calculated that which is a 216 millimeter square the diameter of the distribution bars shall not be less than 6 millimeter let us keep this as 8 millimeter then using this formula we can find the spacing let us round this as 200 millimeter according to this class the spacing of the distribution steel should be less than 5d or 450 whichever is less 5d will be 480 so 450 is less this spacing is less than 450 so it will be safe now we are going to apply the check for the shear stress from this code book page number 72 we can take this formula vu we have already calculated 29.64 kilo newton kilo is a thousand b is 1000 and d is 160 for tau v we will get 0.185 newton per millimeter square 
then using the provided AST, we can find the percentage of steel, which is 0.377. Now in this code book, we have to open page number 73. Our PT is 0.377. For that, we need to find the shear stress tau C. Our FCK is 25. There is no value for 0.377. 0.377 comes between 0.25 and 0.5. So we have to select these two values. We have found tau C for 0.25 and for 0.5. But we have to find for 0.377. We can do interpolation 0.36 plus 0.49 minus 0.36 upon 0.5 minus 0.25 into 0.377 minus 0.25 we will get 0 0.426 then in this code book we have to take page number 72 we have to find the value of k our overall depth of the slab is 190 millimeter for 175 k is 1.25 and for 200 k is 1.2 you can see that for every increase of 5 the value of k decreases by 0 0.01 so to find k for 190 we have to subtract 0 0.01 from 1.25 in this way for k we will get 1.24 when we multiply these two we will get 0.53 in the previous step, we have calculated tau v. We can see that tau v is less than tau c k. So it is safe. Now we are going to apply the check for deflection. From this code book, we have to open the page number 38. From that, we can copy this formula. In this formula, we can apply all of the values. For fs, we will get 225.96. We know the PT value 0 0.377. From this chart, we need to find the modification factor K. In the x-axis, the PT values are given. This is 0.4 and this is 0.2. Ours is 0.377. That comes a little left of 0.4. So approximately, we can make this vertical line like this. This curve is for FS 240 and this curve is for FS 190. Our FS is 225.96. That will come just above this curve. That is why I have extended this line just above this curve. From that point, we have to make a horizontal line. This is 1.2. This is 1.4. So we can keep this point as 1.39 L upon D will be 20 into K. 20 is the basic value for the assembly supported. In the beginning, we have assumed that to be 25. For D, we will get 149.64, which is less than our effective depth 160 millimeter. So it will be safe. Here you can see the reinforcement details. This is the plan. And this is the cross section. You can see that the alternate bars are bent up like this. These are the main reinforcement bars. And these are the distributors. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.